Okay, I want to talk about this whole thing of how the Holy Days are not ceremonial. And they, this whole ceremonial versus moral law garbage is nothing but a straw man that people use. And here, I want to show you some of the places where the Holy Days matter. The, in the Torah, in, in the New Testament, in the writings. So... But I wanted to share real quickly a verse that I was looking for. And uh, that I wanted to share with people. Uh, it's in Revelation 7. Let's start in verse 2 and we'll read verse 3. And I saw another angel ascending from the rising, su rising of the sun, having a seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice, to the four angels who, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of, of our God on their foreheads. And it's obviously, you know, it's not just the, the bald head here like some people have and like myself but it's what's behind it inside in the seal and we can read let's go read Isaiah 56 and and Isaiah 58 real quick about the Sabbath Isaiah 58 will start in, if because of the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight holy day the holy day of the Lord honorable and honor it detesting desisting from your own ways from seeking your own pleasure and speaking your own words then you will take delight in the, the Lord and I will make the make you right on the heights of the earth and I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let's go to Isaiah 56. It says, Thus says the Lord, preserve, starting in verse 1, Thus says the Lord, Preserve justice and do righteously, righteousness. For my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. How blessed is the man who does this, the son of man who takes hold of it, he who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil, let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely separate me from his people. For thus says the Lord, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath and, and choose to what it pleases me and hold fast to my covenant to them I will give in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than that of of sons and daughters and I will give them an everlasting name which will not be cut off also the foreigners who who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him and to love him, the name of the Lord the name character of the Lord I would say it could be said to be his servants everyone who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant even those I will bring my to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my heart house of prayer their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar Uh, but let's uh, let's go to Exodus. Exodus here.
verse 21 of Exodus 34. You shall work six days, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during plowing time and harvest you shall rest. You shall celebrate the feast of weeks, that is the feast, uh, the, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, and the feast of the end gathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year all your males are to appear before the Lord God, which is Yahweh, the God of Israel. For I will drive out nations before you, and no one, uh, I, and enlarge your boundaries, and no man shall covet your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord. Let's go to Exodus 31. Also, that, that really is kind of what I was trying to get at about the Sabbath. Verse 12 of Exodus 31. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall surely observe my Sabbath, for it is a sign between me and, and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Sanctify be set apart. Who sanctifies you. Therefore you are to observe the Sabbath, for it is a for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall be surely put to death, for whoever does any work on on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. For as you may may work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does work on on the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. So the sons of Israel shall observe the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made, Lord's made, heaven, made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from his labor and was refreshed. When they had finished, so it was a sign. It is a sign of his people, the Sabbath, the holy days. Let's go to, to Zechariah chapter 14, I believe it is. Zechariah Okay. Okay, verse uh, 16 of chapter 14 of Zechariah. Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. That tells you it wasn't done away with yet. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. And I'm not going to cover, I well, probably won't get to this in detail, but let's go through it real quick because I want to show you here's the Feast of Trumpets. Verse thir let's start in verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve, not grieve as. Do the, do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in, in Jesus. For this we say to you that by, by the word of the Lord, say to you by the, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. That's, this is an, uh, an important verse to understand the rest of it. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven and will shout with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of, of God and the dead in, in Christ shall rise first. Then, then we who are alive and remain will be caught 
up together with them in the air in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Um, and so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, con comfort one another with these words. That is what it was about. It wasn't about the rapture. This is the holy days, and it taught and where Yeshua was talking about the day or hour that no one knows. He was talking about the Feast of Trumpets because no one knows when the when the moon is going to reappear. You know, about the only the Father knows. Uh, let's read Matthew 24, verse 42. Therefore, be on alert, for you do not know which day the Lord, your Lord is coming. But I be sure of this, that if he, if the head of the household had known at what time the uh, of night the thief was coming, he would have been on alert and would have would not have allowed his whole household to be brought in. Uh, broken into and then of course you see this with also with the virgins virgin the bride came while the some of the virgins were going to get oil which is the Holy Spirit and uh, you know it talks all about the here's the here's a verse verse 36 but of that hour and of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. Yeah, because it won't be, you know, it, it'll be on the Feast of Trumpets, which is, you have to wait for the first sliver of the moon. You can't calculate it, you have to wait for it. You know, and it says that they will keep the feast. And you can read in, in Hebrews all about different things about the temple and tabernacle, explaining the sacrifices. The sacrifices were not just ceremonial law. There is something behind each and every one of them. Why do we partake of the Passover? Because we, as a nation of kings and priests, we are partaking of the sacrifice. You know, these things matter. The holy days matter. The Sabbath matters. The clean and unclean meats matters. Korah matters. It's the wedding contract. It doesn't save us, but it's part of sanctification. Read, pray, obey. Let's, let, let's get this, and let's get right with God, and let's, let's be a light in this dark world. That's what we're here to do. We are to be a light in this world. And as you embrace, as some talks about, those who embrace, embrace the law have shalom. Shalom in the time of testing, in time of trials. That's what's going to set us apart. That's a big part of what's going to set us apart. That's, but these things are a seal. They're not ceremonial. They have a purpose. You know, clean meats. If, if Yeshua thought a uh, pig were, were clean, why in the heck did he let five, th four or five thousand of them go into the sea? They could have fed thousands and thousands of people. If they were clean, why did he let the, the demons go into those things and run them into the, uh, into the sea? Come on. It's about keeping this temple clean. And it's about being ready for the wedding. The bride making herself ready. Sabbath, the holy days, the queen meets, those are all part of this stuff. Shalom, shalom.